Hi everyone, it's John. Instead of a book review, today what I wanted to do was revisit a book I actually reviewed last week. That is not review it again, but do something that I used to do a long time ago and have intermittently done, haven't done it for a while, ever since, I guess, what, four or five years ago. And that is read you a poem. I mentioned in my review of this book, which like I said I reviewed last week, this is John Lewis Gaddis's Georgia Kennan, An American Life. I mentioned in the review that the subject of this biography, Georgia Kennan, fancied himself a bit of a poet. And I also mentioned that he worked at a place, uh, namely the the Institute of Advanced Study, which is associated with Princeton University, for 50 years, if not more, starting in the 50s, if I'm not mistaken. On the occasion of a professor's or a researcher's 70th birthday, it is customary at the Institute to profess someone a researcher emeritus or a professor emeritus. That doesn't mean that they have to retire, but it's just a title that they give you. Being born in 1904, uh, Kennan turned 70 in the year 1974, and he gave an address to the Institute of Advanced Study in 1974 on the occasion of his fourth, uh, 70th birthday and delivered this poem, which, as far as I know, is untitled, but is printed in full in the book. And I just thought maybe poetry would slowly find its way back onto the channel if I shared it with you. So in that spirit, here's the poem from the address that George F. Kennan gave to the Institute of Advanced Study at Princeton University in 1974, on the occasion of his 70th birthday. When the steps become slow, and the wit becomes slower, and memory fails, and the hearing declines, when skies become clouded, and the clouds become lower, and you find yourself talking poetical lines, when the path that you tread becomes steeper and darker, and the question seems no longer weather, but when. Then, my friend, you should look for the biblical marker, the sign by the road that reads threescore and ten. At this point, you'll observe, if you care to look closely, you're no longer alone on the highway of life, for there trudges behind you and glowers morosely, a bearded old man with a curious knife, and you turn to the thoughts of your erstwhile successes, how brilliant, how charming, how worthy of fame, till a small voice protests and the conscious pro conscience professes what an ass you once were and how empty the claim. Then the ghosts of the past find you out in your sadness and gather about and poke fingers of shame. The ghosts of stupidities spawned by your madness, the ghosts of injustices done in your name. And you grieve with remorse for the sins you've committed, the fingers that roamed and the tongue that betrayed. But you grieve even more for the ones you omitted, the nectar untasted, the record unplayed. But the cut most unkind and the cruelest teacher is the feeling you have when, as sometimes occurs, the wandering eye of some heavenly creature encounters your own, and your own catches hers, and you conjure up dreams too delightful to mention, and you primp and you pose, till it's suddenly seen that the actual object of all her attention, this burning, voluptuous female attention, is a fellow behind you who's all of nineteen. Yet, if given the chance to retread, as you've known it, the ladder of life, to begin at a spot where you picked up and before you had blown it, would you take it, dear friends? 
I suspect you would not. So let us take heart. We are none of us friendless. And fill up your glasses and raise them again to the chance that an interval, seemingly endless, will ensue before you become threescore and ten.